Blog Talk Radio. There's a direct relationship between having the businesses and being in prison. Go find an, see how many Asians you can find in American prisons. They ain't going to be in there. But 51% of your prison will be black because you don't, blacks don't have any businesses and industries. There's a direct link. Blacks won't practice group economics. Blacks won't practice group politics. If you don't practice, you're setting yourself up. I told that five-story building, you're setting yourself to get wiped out. Understand the nature of race, which is economic. If you, if you build the first floor, it's economic. Build your businesses and your industries. Control buildings and industry, and put that pools in your money. And hold that money. And, it's a, and practice group economics <clears throat> with it. Arab and Asian money bounces 12 or 13 times for at least. Jewish money bounces 18 times. Black folk got to learn how to practice group economics. Black Americans spend every penny they get outside their own community. Then you take the money and the wealth that you get from that first floor and go to the second floor. The second floor is politics. You then take that money on the first floor and you control your politics. Black folk must quit allowing people to tell them to go out and vote. Vote for what? Nobody's going to do anything for black folk in politics. Politics is controlled by money. Major corporations who got the money. That's what controls politics. If you have no money, you have no say-so, you have no benefits coming. So you take your money and you control and you take your money from the first floor, you buy every politician on the second floor. And any politician you can't buy, you rent or lease them to get what you need. Then once you get the second floor under control with the politician, with your money, then you go to the third floor. The third floor is then is the police department and the court system. You take your money from the first floor and your politics on the second floor and you control the court system and the police department. Then the fourth floor, you t- is your, the fourth floor then is media. You then take the money that you generate off the first floor from business and industries <clears throat> and you go after radio stations, TV stations, newspapers, and cable systems so that you can now inform and communicate with your own people. Right now, <clears throat> black folk only control less than 35 thousandths of 1% of the media in the United States. Out of 12,000 radio stations, black folk own about something like about 75 or 80. That's all. You own no cable systems. You don't have a daily newspaper. You have nothing of importance. You don't. You got about one black TV station. And you, so you can't communicate with your people. You can't inform your people. You can't do anything. You can have Rush Limbaugh and all the rest of the guys talking about racism all day long and bad-mouthing you and O'Reilly. They can talk, call black folk all kind of names all day long. What are you going to do? You can't respond. You can't even communicate with your own people because you, you don't have an economic base. 51% of all the prisons in the United States are black people. You know, even though you only make up 12% of the population. That's no accident. It's because you don't control the economics and the politics. And they're going to go after the weakest people they can get their hands on to incarcerate them. That's the black folk. And what are you going to do in response to them when they, when they, over, when they, when they over incarcerate you? You're going to go out and have a march, a demonstration. We're going to march. March for what? Who cares? Marching has never changed anything. Marching has never changed anything, but maybe comedy has. Today's It's My House podcast is titled The Comedy Rent Vineyards, live stream number 619-768-2945. And, of course, once you get to see it, just press 1 if you want to chime in. Today uh, we're going to be speaking with, um, I guess, Marvin Milton Smith. He's been on here a few times before. Good morning, Milton. Hey, Lee. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, oh, well, well, tell us a little bit. I know about you, but tell us about who you are and the what's the comedy vineyards and what events you have coming up. Well, uh, what I uh, my name like like you said, uh, I I've been doing stand up comedy since '75 uh, uh, in high school, and then uh, in college. Uh, uh, a lot of morale support things I did that uh, also uh, at West Texas A&M uh, did a lot of stand-up comedy uh, and gong shows and things like that. And but lately, I've been teaching comedy. I'm an educator at West at a Fort Worth Independent School District, and and so to make some additional income, I started teaching comedy, and and that helped me sharpen my my uh my tools I got to start working with a uh, comedy buddy also the buffalo uh Edwin Douglas and so we started doing some I started doing some shows with him trying to work hard to get in his show and then eventually we start uh doing shows together and we added uh, uh 
uh, Dwight Jeffrey, Mr. Motivator, and we, we thought we'd come up with the concept of comedy vineyards. And we've only performed the comedy vineyards at Macedonia Baptist Church in Garland, Texas, and that's where we're performing Saturday. Uh, it's on Bucknell Drive in Garland, Texas. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. It's free uh, uh, to the public. Uh, it's a live, re- live recording, so you want to get there early to get you a nice seat. Okay, great, great. Um, <clears throat> so now uh, you, you guys are doing stand up. So I mean, it, it, are you, you, you're doing it. What? Like I don't know what structure you. What format are you doing? Are you doing all three on the stage at the same time, or you know, three stand, mm-hmm. three separate stand up within one? Mm-hmm. Show? Yeah, it's a, so. With, with comedy, with a standard comedy show, you'll have three three performers, and that's what we're doing. It's a standard comedy show. You'll have three performers. One will host. One will be what we call the featuring act, and the other, the last person, will be the headliner. So this is the third time we performed in Macedonia Baptist Church. Both times I've been the host, uh, where Mr. Motivator, he was our headliner the first time. Uh, the second time, what we called, we got – Pro, uh, uh, product uh, made out of it called, it's called The Second Coming and that's where Edwin Douglas uh, was the headliner and then this time as I call you know we, uh, the third time I'll be headlining and, and so I'll get to bring my full full flavor to the, to the state but a standard comedy show is where you'll have three performers a lot of times Edwin Douglas and I would put, just the two of us would perform uh, and so we would switch off who would come last as your headliner, depending on the situation. So that's how this is. All three of us can can work in either slot. Okay. Now, are are, are they participating in the um, uh, the, part, the interview today? Uh, they should be on. Uh, I call. You know, I I, I did give them in, uh, instruction on that uh, that we were doing this. So I, and I just talked with Edwin Douglas, so he said he'd be here in a minute. But they may be on okay. listening. I don't know. If you could. Okay, well now if they want to chime in on it, all if, you know, all you need to do is press one, and then I'll be able to, then I can identify you and then put you on the. Uh, oh, okay. So that's what they need to do is press. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That once I got one, all right, and then um, okay. So okay, all right. I'll bring them in. Um, before I bring them, in, I had a question. Uh, matter of fact, yeah. Let me ask this question. Then I'm a, I'm gonna open up their mics as well. They, anybody can chime in on it. Now you you say you guys are performing at Macedonia what Baptist Church? Macedonia Baptist Church on Bucknell Drive in Garland, Texas. My question is, I've heard a gospel. I guess a gospel comedy Christian now. I guess the obvious is you don't tell any what we call blue humor, so no no uh, no Richard Pryor jokes. So what what? Well, you know we can think you can tell uh, a joke that's inspired by uh, Richard Pryor because you know I come out of the the stab and jab uh, genre and the, you know of telling uh, telling it like but uh, like like it is. But the you know, one of the big mistakes we made just re- just caught it last year. We uh, had product on hand uh, about the first performance we had we did, and I put in. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Okay, so we put I I I put the wrong quality control. I put the stab and jab type performance in the in the church uh, uh, CD uh, DVD case, and I I got to correct that uh, Saturday to give to give those people. Uh, Something different, so they no one complained, you know. But they did get the blue from us, so that's we had it packaged wrong. Oh, okay, okay. But no, the, the, the key thing to that is any comedian you hire, uh, Lee, it, if a person is looking to book book us or book any comedian, you want to make sure that uh, our material and delivery is consistent with the audience's point of view and frame of reference. So any comedian you hire, you want to capitalize on on that sort of thing. So and that's what that's what we oh, do. So if we okay. at the stab and jab, we do that to, uh, to relate with the audience. But also, uh, wherever we are, we want to make sure that we uh, de- deliver for for that audience. You know. So and the main thing All is right. to never offend an audience. 
Right, right. Now I've got. Uh, I, I think they've called in, so I, I got. Uh, air, I'll introduce them like this. Uh, we got area code eight thirteen. Um, That's comedian Edwin Douglas. Uh, That's me. Okay. Not did Mel, Did I meet him back? Well, four or five years. Yeah. Ago, last time I was. Uh, That's your place. Yeah, you met him yeah. in my home. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somebody hey, just was. Hello. Yeah. How you doing, okay. man? Uh, uh, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, that was a nice little um, get there. I think he had tables, a perfect get together. Ten people, and I didn't even get around all ten people. So, but I, I remember him. I remember him. <laughs> now, the, the other area code we have here is area code 619. I mean, excuse me, 419. Uh, 469. 469. That still be Mr. Moe. Okay, great, great, Mr. Moe. All right, well, um, you know what? Let, 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 let me go to Edwin Douglas. Edwin, now, give us how did you get started in comedy, and, and uh, you know, what can we expect uh, this weekend? Well, let me answer that first question. First of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me on your show. Um, I first got started as Milton kind of gave you a little brief detail. Uh, Milton and I, uh, all of us, are buff. West Texas A&M University. Um, one well, day that, we was on the highway. Me and, me, me, and Wilt, me and Wilt went. We started off together, freshmen and, and right, graduate right. at the same time. Yeah. Right, right, right. So Milton um, had had a book on comedy, and I had a, a book on real estate. And uh-huh. we, was talk- we was on the highway talking, hey, hey, man, let's get together, let's do this. I said, I want to do this, but I want to do this also. So what had happened, he had this Carton Speak real estate uh, kit, and I had, uh, and we had changed. You know, I had the kit, and I'm sorry, he had the book. I took the book and read it based on what he shared with me. So I go to open mic, and for those who um, have been following me and hearing my story, I used to work part-time for the Comedian Earthquake Comedy Club and had the opportunity to to meet. And my part-time job was everyone you have seen on BET Comedy View, Def Jam, they would come to – Earthquake Comedy Club, and my job was to take them back and forth from the hotel to the club. So one night, I decided to do open mic. You only got three to four minutes, okay? And that Uh night, I did good. Not great, but good enough. I come back the next week and did the same material. Ain't nobody laughed at nothing. So what that did was mm-hmm. that book that Milton gave, marvelous Milton Smith gave me, I had to go back to the basics uh-huh. and learn the concept, the basics, the business. And my first first opportunity, I went back to the mic and recapitalized what Milton told me, what the book instructed me to do. And we're talking about ever since 1998, and, and I've grown over a couple of decades. Now, I want to okay. say something you said you asked about gospel. Before I made transition in the gospel, I was in the comedy club doing like Richard Pryor, trying to define myself, trying to define what style I want to use. Well, for those that who there's a difference between Christian comedy and gospel, okay? Christian comedy, your format is just trying to get believers and non-believers according to relating to the Bible. That's Christian comedy. Gospel. Now, God gave me gospel soul. Not just gospel stand-up comedy, but gospel soul stand-up comedy. That means the right. truth. I'm going to convert that into Ebonic, E-B-O-N-I-C, Ebonic. Tell it like it is. In other words, 
bring the church to the street and bring the street to the church. I'm, I ain't, I ain't going to half step in a sense. So what everybody going to expect this coming Saturday? Last year, I brought the church to the street. This this coming Saturday, I'm bringing the street to the church. I'm going to tell y'all what y'all pastor okay. ain't going to tell y'all. That's, that's why I come in there. That, that's what's going to happen Saturday. So if, if, if you need to go to YouTube and see church folks, grown folks, kin folks, that's what I did last year. This year, it's titled... I'm going to tell, not everybody, I'm going to tell everybody, okay? Ebonic, okay? You heard me? <laughs> that's what's going to happen okay. this time. <laughs> All right. Now, Mr. Motivator, um, give us your, well, tell us a little bit about you, how you got started, and what what can we expect this weekend at the Comedy Vineyards? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to uh, say uh, hello and thank you for the opportunity uh, to be uh, on the show with you today and for uh, give uh, featuring all of us. Um, how I got started, <clears throat> basically I was working for a company, and uh, there was a young lady I worked with. Her name was um, uh, Shirley, and Shirley uh, wanted me to, she said, uh, she said, Dwight, I think you would be a great, you'd be a great manager. You, you, you have something special, and she said, you just don't know it. And uh, and I said, okay. And so she said, I, I got someplace uh, special I want to take you to. And I'm like, well, where are we going? And she said, uh, I'm going to take you to Toastmasters. And I thought it was a, a, a breakfast place, but I found out it was a communications organization. And um, so I got I signed up with Toastmasters so that I could, you know, do some uh, manager training and, and be more um, – uh, uh, hands on with communicating with uh, the people and everything. So after I, right. I started doing my my uh, my you know trainings for uh, managers, you know speaking in front of organizations and groups, someone suggested I try for a, a comedy uh, contest. Uh, it was an international contest. I I really didn't think I was I was funny, but I just just out of doing something just to see what it would be like. Out of all these contestants, uh, it was like about 300 people there, and I noticed all of a sudden they gave me um, a first-place award uh, out of all of these uh, contestants, and I never received a trophy award for anything my whole entire life, and it was for, for comedy, for doing a humorous speech. And before I know anything, one of the, the, the guys that was in the organization uh, was friends with somebody at the, the, the comedy club, at the improv comedy club, and he got me hooked up over there. I went on my first night, and there was a lot of professional comedians there, and um, they uh, um, they said I killed, and I, I really enjoyed it. And um, from and then from that point on, um, I met um, uh, Milton's wife, and his wife... Um, saw me and she said, hey, I, I like your comedy. And she said, my husband is a comedian. You you need to meet him. I, I think uh, you all would uh, really be helpful to each other and, and you would hit it off. And so anyway, she got me connected with Milton. And uh-huh. uh, and I think I met Edwin uh, a few years um, earlier, uh, maybe five or six years at uh, one time I went to a uh, a place of a, sh- a show, and Evan was doing a comedy. But anyway, I didn't know he was connected with Milton, and so Milton kind of put us together, and we uh, we we decided to to venture into uh, doing something together, and it just hit big. And uh, Milton had a, his uncle Joe uh, invite us to come down, and <laughs> his uncle Joe said, "Hey, uh, you 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 better get out here and." And you better be really funny, cause man, these people are paying some money to come here, and I I, I want to stay in business. And we we had a great time and hit, and that was that was it. But Uncle Uncle Joe and um, he motivated all of us, cause he was letting us know, hey, uh, you either be funny or I'm gonna, or I'm gonna drag you out this club. It it ain't gonna be like <laughs> uh, um, at Apollo. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be even more serious. So. Um, it, it was awesome, man, and, and people loved us, and 
we we've been teamed up together uh, as a the comedy vineyards and entertaining people and and what people can expect to to hear from me when they come out just uh, natural humor. I, I you know when I was at the comedy club, some of the comedians you know they were great, but a lot of them like you know to curse and do everything. And I told a, a couple of the younger brothers, I said, hey, you you are funny. You don't have to have a curse. Well, I mean. If you're funny, you're funny, but you know that's your choice. Right. They said, "Hey, you know the, the the old guys trying to tell us uh, we don't need to curse." But when I got out there, they said, "Man, uh, the, the old guy was funny. Man, I couldn't stop laughing." And and so that's that's what it's about, you know, just using your gift and just being you. And that's 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 what makes comedy real when you just be yourself and don't try to be anybody else. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Now, how did you get the name Mister Motivate? Well, I was a teacher um, in the school district, and um, the kids would come to my class, and, you know, I had a lot of them that were troublemakers. And when I got through talking to them, <laughs> uh, they, sometimes they would laugh at me, but they say, Mr. Jeffrey, he's the only teacher that can motivate me. And so the t- all of my colleagues start looking at how, what does what did Mr. Jeffrey do to get one of the the, the worst kids at our school to want to come to his room and want to do things to him. And so they started taking notes. And so the teacher starts saying, that's Mr. Motivate, because if he can, if he can get, uh, stop um, uh, uh, Jimmy Joe from uh, getting in fights and doing terrible things, and he's got a whole bunch of other kids coming to him, uh, that man is a motivator. And so the kids gave me the name Mr. Motivator, and uh, and then and the kids uh uh, I worked with uh, as a special teams coach for for uh, our football team, and so uh, the guys were calling me Mr. Coach Jeffrey, and, and they stopped calling me Coach Jeffrey. They said uh, we need Mr. Motivate. So at halftime, uh, the 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 team and and the coaches they wanted me to do the pep talk when uh, we'd be behind at halftime, and they said, hey, <laughs> that man is a motivator. So they everybody started calling me Mr. Motivator instead of. Coach Jeffrey and I, I just ran with it. No, oh, okay, great, great, great. Now we've got. Um, I wanted to do an hour today, but we only can do thirty minutes today, so we got seven minutes left. But tomorrow okay. on another channel I have, we can do up to two hours if you guys. And it doesn't have to be this time of day. It can be you guys can pick it like in um, late afternoon or even early evening or up to 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. That's tomorrow for if you want up to two hours, because your, your show's this weekend. Is that correct, Nelson? Yes, yes, Saturday yes. at 7 okay. o'clock. And so, yeah, you guys can that. discuss and that. No, I'll call you this afternoon on if you guys oh. want to do two hours, additional two hours uh, podcast okay. tomorrow on, on another, you know, uh, when I call you back on that. Just, you know, I'm going to throw this out there because uh, – you guys are educating and, and all that. I've got, well, Milt, you already know this. I've got some land in Oklahoma. i got some land in Texas. And I'm opening up a little school myself, a little one-room schoolhouse. But i got enough land where we can do, uh, what do you call it, a comedy festival. I don't know how to put, put one together. I'm just throwing that idea out there. i got the land platform. And we can put up some buildings, so I'm just planting that mustard seed if you guys are interested in that because um, um, as I'm looking at you guys. Just, I'm looking at this from a business, a marketing name. You don't need uh, <laughs> all these and, mixed markets out there. But anyway, getting, the, the, getting back to uh, tomorrow, we've got five minutes mm-hmm. left, so Milton, going back to you, coming back to you. Um, okay. Give us the location again, and then you know how much uh, the tickets of you know admission there is, and then quick yeah, can well, get the tickets online or at the door. Well, okay. Well, the the main thing is that what we're doing is uh, it, it's a free it's a free recording, so it's an opportunity for us to create product and have an audience yeah. there while we do it. Uh, so the audience okay. don't have to pay the the church reverend uh, Jackie Miles. I mean, I mean, Reverend Bobby Miles and his wife Jackie, they are uh, excellent hosts that allow us to perform in their, uh, perform at their venue there. 
but the the thing about comedy is that you know the there's a comedic equation lead with with comedy and it, and it boils down to the, it's a simple thing is that comedy is about an ordinary human being struggling against insurmountable odds without many of the required skills and tools with which to win yet never gives up hope and so we know that you know like uh uh Mark Twain has said that 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 laughter is humankind's greatest blessing, and so in this in this in this day and age, uh, it, it's a uh, it's incumbent upon all of us to try to to find some laughter and, and hope and, and uplift, and that's what we're bringing bringing to the to the table. And if the the guys that perform with me, Edwin Douglas, he's been my comedy buddy since you know uh, since we started getting together. You've known me before Edwin Douglas known me, Lee, and in all that time. That you've known me, I've only had one comedy buddy, one comedy buddy, and that's uh, Edwin Douglas. I love what he brings to the table, his, uh, his desire and stuff like that to 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 entertain his audience. And Mr. Motivator does the, does the same. So I'm looking for Man, an outstanding let, show. Let, let me uh, let, let me jump in here real quick. Going back because okay. you know when we were back at West Texas, um, now this is before you did the Met. At West okay. Texas. But, okay. But um, I, I want to put the let Mr. Motivator and Edwin Douglas here, this and the radio audience. You were legendary before you even did the Met. Okay. Because I didn't think you were on the football team. So, Pfeiffer and then some other people that were on the football You had these guys cracking up and practicing on the bus and all that. So, mm-hmm. I, you know. That's how I heard about the comedic skills to them. All right. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, then that, you know, I got to see you a human person and uh, positive and everything. But then you did the Met. That, by matter of fact, you sold that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they yeah. weren't selling tickets, but there wasn't mm-hmm. any empty but, seats, put it that way. I remember you said that I was telling them about that my homeboy, Steve Martin, you said that Steve Martin uh, performed the WT standing room only and then. You said a couple of weeks later, you're the same place, and you're standing room only and watching my show. Right. Hmm. Right. You, you, well, right. Mr. You, Mr. Davis. That, Steve Martin, that's when he had that, um, he was doing that let's get small or whatever thing. A wild and crazy, crazy, wild and crazy guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, that's Excuse wild and crazy me. Guy. He was real yeah. hot with that, and um, he was real hot, and he came to WT. And then you were right behind, so stand and room on. For Mr. Stand Davis, on, both Mr. Davis, I'm just, well, we got I'm two say minutes this. left. This, we got two minutes left. Uh, Edwin Douglas, uh, give us uh, give us something that you want to say in the last two minutes for today's podcast, because like I said, I can have you guys back tomorrow for a full two hours. What I want to say is, is Mr. Marvelous Milton Smith. Not only is he the creator, he's the educator of the Comedy Vineyard. I'm the promoter, and Mr. Motivator is the motivator of this group. But I want, what I want to say before I leave is that I want everyone that who's listening to this interview, keep believing in yourself because God is the only one who can take the impossible and make it possible. And, you know, just keep mm-hmm. on believing. And Mr. Motivator, what say you? I'd like to say to everyone listening, dare to dream and keep thinking big. You will discover your purpose in life. I think if, if you just live, you, you're going to stumble into some things if you don't give up. And the last thing I would like to add, come out to the show on Saturday night and you haven't been entertained until you see Mr. Motivator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Milk, you got the last word. Uh, you got uh, 40 seconds, Milk. Uh, I just, uh, well, well, Lee, uh, Lee I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity here. And uh, like I say, we're looking forward to getting our laugh on in the comedy vineyard. Okay. On that note, uh, people that listen to this podcast, about 30 minutes afterwards, you can go to our on-demand number, which is 712-432-8863. That's 
432-8863. And then you can listen to this podcast on demand for 24 hours. Uh, on the internet, you can go to Blog Talk Radio and just play it back. It's in our archives. And then uh, we'll be picking back this up, hopefully for a two-hour interview tomorrow. On that note, everyone have a good rest of the day.